Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems on MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, a 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you were one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson nine of the Behavioral Science 1 module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. All right, the key to acing this question is having a good understanding of how the G-protein signaling pathway works. So I wanna walk through that with you today. Now a catecholamine is a type of hormone that includes epinephrine, for example. So we're gonna say that this little red circle represents the hormone epinephrine or adrenaline. What's going to happen is this hormone wants to affect something inside the cell, but through this G-protein signaling pathway, it's actually going to bind to a, re a receptor right here on the cell membrane. So it can stay outside of the cell. This receptor is then going to do something really interesting inside of the cell because we have a G protein here inside the cell. And normally at rest, it's connected to a GDP molecule. But once this receptor here that I've drawn in purple is activated, it's going to trigger the release of this GDP and GTP, GTP is going to bind to the G protein instead. That means the G protein is now activated. So it can go and in turn, it can connect to and activate this protein, which is adenylyl cyclase. We're going to write AC. And adenylyl cyclase does something really important. Adenylyl cyclase is going to take ATP, as you can see right here, and it's going to convert it to cyclic AMP. That cyclic AMP then goes on and through a series of steps is going to affect the target, the thing that we are trying to affect inside the cell from the very beginning. What's really cool about this, though, is even though this is, may seem like a convoluted series of steps, it's really neat because with just one single molecule of hormone, we activate this receptor, this receptor can actually activate multiple G proteins. And so then we're activating multiple adenylyl cyclase proteins, and we're getting lots of molecules of cyclic AMP to do their job and do what we want them to do just through that one hormone molecule. And so that's the really cool thing about this and about what's going on here. Now that we have that understanding, let's go back to this problem and see what we can figure out. Okay, so this problem wants us to figure out what is the advantage of the G protein signaling pathway that we just talked about used by catecholamines. Now remember, a catecholamine is a type of hormone, like epinephrine, and that G protein signaling pathway we just walked through, so we have a pretty good understanding of how it works. Let's look at these answer options and see what we can figure out here. This first one says, receptor flexibility on the cell surface allows different hormones to bind while activating the same messenger cascade. Now that may seem tempting, Right? because we know there's a messenger cascade involved in this G protein signaling pathway. We go from one protein to another to another, but the receptors are actually specific to the specific hormones that are binding to them. And as, as such, this answer is going to be incorrect, meaning the receptor that's used for epinephrine is specific to epinephrine. That's going to be incorrect. How about this answer option here? Binding on the nuclear membrane allows for regulation of gene translation, which results in a much larger response. Well, this may look tempting because we are going to get a larger response through this pathway, but notice that this answer option says the binding happens on the nuclear membrane, or the membrane of the nucleus. That's going to be inside the cell, but we know that the receptor for this G-protein signaling pathway is actually on the cell membrane, that the hormone actually binds outside of the cell. So we're going to go ahead and cross this one off as well. Finally, right here, it says direct action on the intended target allows for quicker response time. But remember, the whole point of the signaling pathway is that we're not acting directly. We're acting indirectly through a series of steps, right? We're getting down to that cyclic AMP, and then through a series of steps, we're going to be able to affect our target. target. But the epinephrine isn't binding specifically to that target. So this is going to be incorrect as well. That leaves us with the last answer option. Signal amplification requires a small concentration of hormone to produce a large scale effect. And that checks out, because remember, with only one molecule of epinephrine, we can create a ton of cyclic AMP. We can really boost the effect of our hormone, even with a small concentration through this pathway. So this is going to be our correct answer. Let's check it out. Awesome. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. Now, if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can help you maximize your MCAT score. Look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.